this is a pretty casual uh, video. It's uh, just talking through sort of the various changes uh, to me through the gardening process and, and, and my gardens, you know, as I've bought these old barren gardens, how I've sort of changed them into these lovely, beautiful flower and wildlife havens. Um, and one of those main things I've done is is bring sort of an organic, um, uh, you know, to restore the garden to its organic status. And I'm going to talk about that, uh, the effects and the benefits of that in this video. Wherever I've lived, and I've lived um, in Brighton with um, a smaller urban garden. Actually, it was quite big for a Brighton garden, to be honest. It, it wasn't that bad a size, actually. But um, in that garden, I um, quite by chance learned the value of organic gardening. So in that garden was when I was uh, had my first child and I knew two things that I wanted from from having a garden uh, was that it must be uh, beautiful and full of flowers and beauty for my children and two that it would be safe must be safe and so what I did not want especially with children being so low to the ground I did not want them breathing in poison or you know picking up a slug pellet and putting it in their mouths as children do you know when they're wandering around they put all sorts of rubbish in their mouths so um it became sort of um you know the only thing I could possibly think of doing was to just go organic and that was fine back then I'm not sure how big organic gardening was but I I just for me it was a no-brainer it was mainly about my kids safety and you know I didn't really like poisons and chemicals who does anyway so um that was a no brainer. But what happened from that was I went on to have three more kids. So obviously my garden never re received pesticides or um, slug pellets or any of that. So what I noticed in that period when I lived in Brighton with young children was that my garden just became alive with wildlife. Um, so it was beautiful. I had flowers everywhere. It was actually blooming it was busting with flowers uh, especially around my uh, first daughter's birthday which was in July and uh, it always looked really beautiful for her birthday so we always had uh, parties in the garden and it you know it was just lovely and it was quite a secret that I didn't do as much work in my garden as people might have thought because I let the flowers and the flowering shrubs do all the work. So there wasn't really a great deal of weeding or tidying, uh, you know, behind uh, all those places because these shrubs would just grow up and, uh, you know, cover everything with flowers. And what was also great about that was then obviously the butterflies started coming and, you know, um, we had all sorts. We even once had a bird of prey sitting in our yew tree and we had lilacs uh, attracting all the bees and oh it was it was really beautiful in the summer and then i did i did landscape my front garden more formally where i filled them out with daphne and uh, hydrangea rhododendrons and that was a really beautiful very low maintenance garden so um i learned a lot when i had my first garden in brighton and i was there for how long was I there? I mean, must have been there 15 years. Uh, so then um, I have my next garden, which was this garden. This garden was almost exactly the same as when I moved into my Brighton garden. It was just a square of soggy, slimy lawn with some raggedy, uh, pathetic bushes and really not much else. I mean, you could not, I could not grow anything in this garden when I first moved in. It had the exact same hallmarks of any garden that has been reduced to nothing with pesticides. Now, some people really just like lawn and fences with a few meagre shrubs around. Some people think that is gardening. Um, and they wonder why they cannot grow anything else. Well, you can't grow anything else if you put pesticides, slug pellets, all like that on your land, simply because you just ruin the balance in the land, right? You kill all the insects, more or less all of them. And not only that, you send the birds away because the birds that haven't died from eating the poisoned insects will just go and move away because there will be nothing in your garden for them. And that means you enter into this kind of 
never ending cycle of having to add chemicals onto your garden because you have no one else fighting that battle for you. So you have to reduce, uh, resort to poison. If you encourage the birds and the insects, the birds will come. They don't just take, you know, um, slugs. They will eat all the insects. They will come and peck at the aphids. If you see the little tits, they're always on the buds, picking away at all those little insects, getting the protein, all those insects that, um, and bugs that would have destroyed your plant. And you have suddenly an army of little organic gardeners clearing up round after you, clearing up your plants and keeping them nice and healthy and keeping a good balance. That only happens when you stop poisoning your land. And that, for me, has been the number one thing. Because when I first moved into this garden in particular, I could not even walk to my garage. I could not walk from my front door in my house to my garage without standing at night. You know, if I was because I have my washing machine out there, so I'd go and maybe put something in the tumble dryer and I would scrunch, crash, clack, crick, all these snails. And it's gross, you know. They were, the whole garden was awash with them. I could not put out uh, any seedlings. So anything I tried to germinate, I, I, you know, when I thought they were big enough, I'd put them outside. By the morning, they would all be gone. Every single one would be eaten. And it was so demoralising. But obviously, after two or three years of just sitting it out with the organic, not going, oh, well, I'm going to put some slug pellets around that next time. Because then what happened was I built up a stock of birds. So I had lots of birds now. And now I get other insects because the other insects also eat the bad insects. So the ladybirds eat the aphids and so on and so forth. So now I have a little army of critters helping me keep my garden healthy and safe. And now I can put up. I almost never lose plants to slugs or other bugs. Almost never. I mean, I might go out and see one leaf has been nibbled overnight. But because I have an army of other products, of other plants that I've grown from seed, I don't even care. This is part of nature. This is part of sharing the earth. Uh, if they take one, so what? I've got all these others. It's when they demolish all of them because all you have is slugs because even the birds don't come to your garden to eat the slugs because they know they're poisoned. And on that note, you know, we do have a horrible decline in our native birds, uh, thrush in particular. And I have been very pleased to notice that I have three um, that I've noticed that are different uh, thrushes. So not the same one seen three times. I've seen three together in my garden last summer. So I'm absolutely delighted to be able to contribute that to, you know, um, the earth. So that going organic, it doesn't mean you have to be a little bit messy like I am. I'm just a messy person. You don't have to do that. That Just because I'm messy doesn't mean I'm messy because my garden is organic. Uh, I, that's not true. Um, you can still have a very smart, neat, uh, um, uh, or what do you call it? Um, super clipped, manicured garden. You can you can do this in any contemporary garden. Uh, you know, don't think just because I have all these flowers spilling about everywhere and I have pots over there by the chicken coop and things that that's the result of being an organic garden. No, that's the result of me being a messy <laughs> cottage gardener who's always pottering around from one job to the next. Um, you, you can, I have done the whole, um, you know, uh, trimmed all my box hedges and made it super smart. But being a sort of single parent, I don't have the time to maintain it and do all the other things that I need to do. So I prefer to go with the looser cottage garden look because it, it for me, I can hide a multi multitude of sins that way. So don't connect um, having an organic garden with a messy, uh, you know, creative cottagey garden. OK, so that's my main secret weapon, the wildlife, you know, the the organic gardening. I just can't stress enough the importance of it. And, you know, when I introduced some new flowers into the garden last year, I actually saw these new insects. And then I now feel obliged to grow them again, uh, because, you know, I think if you've encouraged those insects into your garden, you almost kind of have an obligation to to keep giving them uh, food and a home. 
uh, if they've established there. So, um, yeah, I, I really can't uh, recommend it highly enough. And it's an absolute delight seeing the birds. I've got this ugly robin. I'm definitely going to do a video on him. He's such a little character and he always comes around. He will sit. I mean, he's almost sat on my arm. I was really willing him to sit on my arm. He didn't, but he, he gets that close to me. And, it, you know, this is just charming. I think he, see, he knows I'm not going to hurt him. So he comes or she, um, even when the cat and the dog is about, he knows he can come near me because I will protect him from those things. And he'll come and he'll just pick around the soil where I'm working. He's so sweet. And he's called the ugly Robin because he's got some feathers missing. And it's almost like his head was caught in a trap or something. I'm not entirely sure uh, why. Or maybe he's just got an illness. I don't know. But. Uh, he has got a girlfriend and they are building a family together, a nest together. So that's so I'm going to I'm going to share that with you, maybe a little story on that, get some footage of him for you. So the birds love the insects. They That's the, what they like, the protein. So, yes, you can put seeds out for them, but of course, as, uh, to uh, uh, um, enrich their diet. But actually, they really get most of their nutrients, a lot of them from protein from all the insects. And so if you're putting out, if you're having to put out seeds to feed birds, it probably means, you know, you haven't got enough uh, food in the earth for them. I understand putting out more in winter when the ground is frozen because they can't access, obviously, any insects on the ground then. Um, and the fat balls and all like that. I think that's a great idea. But um, really, birds eat a lot of insects and bugs. And that is what they like to eat. And one other thing, diatomaceous earth, please don't use it. It doesn't just kill certain insects. It kills all insects, good or bad. Uh, please don't use it. It's, it's, just, it's just really, it's used a lot and it's touted as an organic solution and it really is not. So please don't use diatomaceous earth either. I cannot really say that strongly enough. Just trust in your wildlife garden to encourage the insects the beads the butterflies and the birds and they will all take care of each other all right so that's my number one and most major tip for supercharging and rocket boosting your garden back to health so that you can literally grow all these plants without worrying about pests and diseases um, i'm going to do a part two on how i sort of supercharged and rocket boosted my actual gardening knowledge and just as i play out i'm going to play you the sounds from my garden which i just recorded now at the end of this video just to prove that the bird population is very prolific in my garden thanks to going organic and um, I can literally hear them. I'm upstairs at a desk recording this and I thought, you know what? <laughs> I can he even hear the birds up here with the windows and doors shut because it's raining. Uh, so I'm going to go out and I'm going to film them. I did catch, unfortunately, the rain, the sound of the rain also. Um, but you, you can hear them. And so I'll play out with that. OK, and then anyway, just to say, if you like this video, I'm going to do loads more. Uh, please subscribe, click the notification bell and like and share with your friends. And, you know, I think I'm going to do Cosmos next. I, I, I did a really, a really surprising, had a really surprising result with my Cosmos. So I'm probably going to do a video on that. And I've been planting out my larkspur. So lots and lots to catch up on. So please stay tuned. And in the meantime, here are the birds. <laughs>